Welcome to part number 19 of Gran Turismo 5 Beast Spec. This is the Moving Chicane, and today we're going to do the Muscle Car Championship. So, I'm going to get in my Chevrolet Camaro, or not Camaro, my Corvette Stingray Final Prototype, aka the C7 model. It's pretty much identical to the final product. I think it is. It looks exactly the same to me, but anyways. Go to the Professional Series, go to the Muscle Car Championship, only two events here, Daytona, Road Course, and Laguna Seca, so we're going to have Flynn drive because Maldonado, Kobayashi, and Vargas are not really feeling that good. And I see that Sport Soft Compounds are the hardest compound, or softest compound, I mean, that we can use. So yeah, I checked the performance points before starting this stream and recording, and... The highest performance points is like around 520. My car is about 521, I think. Yep, 521. So everyone's pretty much on par. Let's go buy soft tires. There they are. And here's our field. So we have two Mustangs leading the field. A Prowler, a Cuda. Mustang Cobra R, myself, and another Camaro, or Camaro. C5 Corvette in the back. So, I have a feeling the muscle cars from like the 70s are going to struggle because, and the 60s, because of the short gearboxes. They'll struggle around the banking for sure, but in the horseshoes and in the middle section, maybe not so much. Alright, black screen, here we go. All right, let's see what Flynn can do. Well, not much you can do at the start right now. Everybody is just really tight together. It's kind of like an accordion right now. Once again, it's a turn number one, and then it starts to stretch out when you get out of the corner. Up to fifth now. Ooh, the Mustang contact with the Prowler. Let me get driver names up. There we go. Nice inside pass on the Camaro. Two passes, sweet. Flynn's a man on a mission right now. Chasing down the Prowler and the leading Mustang. Can you make a pass before we get into NASCAR 1? Ooh, a little bump and run, maybe? Good old American style of racing right there. <laughs> Rubbing is racing. Yep, gets the job done before NASCAR 1. Man, Conley in the Mustang is really trying to block Flynn big time. But you know what? My boy gets around him before the bus stop. Oh, wow. Was that the Prowler who went sideways? Brands lost quite a lot of positions. But you know what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't affect us in any way, shape, or form. The Corvette, driven by Mason, coming from the back, working his way to the front. Yeah, look, all the muscle cars, they're pretty much in the back, see? Topping out at 113, 126, 115. Yeah, these cars are definitely the slowest. So when we buy one for the Supercar Nostalgia Cup, well, actually not the Supercar Nostalgia Cup because we have the Chevelle for that, but... When we buy one for the Classic Muscle Car Championship, we need to buy a transmission more than anything else. Because it's Monza. So Flynn just keeping a nice steady pace. Mason up to second now. Corvette 1-2. Not quite a 3-4 and four for Mustangs. Where's the other Mustang at? 
Wow. Kitamura fell all the way back to 7th. Alright. But I prefer Dominguez's Mustang. I like this SVT Cobra R way more. TBH. Prowler is a really interesting vehicle. <laughs> For a standard car, the interior is really detailed. I mean, it's too bad this thing never got the premium treatment, but I mean, it could use some work, the interior. But I remember playing it on GT5 and 6 back in the day, and the Prowler actually had a really nice interior for a PS2 model. Which, speaking of which, you know what they should have done, Polyphony? They should have just imported all of the interiors from Gran Turismo 4 for all the convertible cars. That would have been really cool. So that way, even though it's a standard car, you know, it still has an interior. A functioning interior like the Prowler did in this game. And like the um, LMP cars did in this game as well for standard models. It'd be better than just a black shadow of an interior, but hey. I sat in both a Chrysler Prowler and a Chevrolet SSR. Nice! What did you think of both of them? In terms of trucks, I'm more of a Toyota Tundra person, because my brother has one. Hey Barney, how you doing? Oh, it's great? Awesome. Damn, what happened to Mason's uh, front bumper? Probably made contact with the Camaro, if anything. Now, I expect the competition to be tighter at Laguna Seca, but because we're at Daytona... No, I do not want to quit. Because we're at Daytona, this car is well suited for the banking. It has the most power, I think, in the entire field. So yeah, Jacques is literally three seconds off the pace, so that goes to show the gap between ourselves and last place. I mean, it's not really consistent in terms of second, third, etc. It doesn't go from, like, fastest to slowest. But, yeah, Mason is really bad in the first sector. Also in the second sector. Wow, look at Fonseca in the Camaro. Really bad in the first sector, and then improves heavily in the second one. Just tell our boy Flynn to calm down. Or not calm down, but to keep that pace up. Ooh, side by side. It's probably due to their pace. Hey, what's up, Plepkin? How you doing? That too. It could be their pace, yeah. Mason is really calm. Conley's hot. Fonseca is in the middle. Yeah, that is true, Blub King. Just want him to maintain this gap. <laughs> Easily the slowest car here. That poor Plymouth Cuda. My favorite Gran Turismo game is Gran Turismo 4. Like, for me, that one is the perfect game in the entire series. Like, in terms of variety, like cars, tracks, events... The length of the career mode, like, all of that. I knew it. <laughs> Second would be Gran Turismo 3. Third would be Gran Turismo 2. Fourth is Gran Turismo 1. Fifth is Gran Turismo 6. And least favorite is Gran Turismo 5. But I still like this game a lot. I'm actually having more of an appreciation now I'm doing the B-Spec properly.
Then again, I did use DLC cars, but I mean, I asked you guys on Discord if it was cheating, and an overwhelming 89% said it's not, so yeah, I mean, because I paid for the cars after all. As I said earlier, I'm playing through GT5, but I'm stuck on the History Car Championship. Damn. What kind of car are you using for that, by the way? My dad's favorite Gran Turismo game is 5. Oh, nice. I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. You know, this could be your favorite game in this series. This is personally my least favorite. But like I said, I'm having more of an appreciation for it now. I managed to beat it with a fully tuned Countach with racing soft tires and pushing it really hard. Challenger RM? Well, have you... Well, I know this is kind of a dumb question on my end, but have you tried adjusting the transmission to each different track? I mean, Monaco, you might want to do 150 tops. Deep Forest, maybe 170, 180? Yeah, I don't know. That's the only way I can think of, like, just messing around with the settings for the car itself. I hate the Toyota 7 now. <laughs> yeah, that Toyota 7 and the Chaparral 2J, they're the worst to fight in that series. Like, the Toyota 7 is the only car that I know in this champ in this game where you can win it. Yeah, it is best if you use the Toyota 7. Although, don't spoil it. I don't I don't want to spoil it necessarily for him. If he has if he doesn't know where it is, I know where to get it, but. I don't know if Zero Beat knows how to unlock it. Hey, Gran Turismo fan, how's it going? Where is my lemon car? <laughs> my lemon car is nowhere to be seen. I'm driving my good old Camaro. I can't afford it, it kind of sucks. Well, you can win it. The Chaparral 2J pisses me off in the Historic Racing Cup. Yeah, that car and the Toyota 7, like I said, they're the worst. They're pretty much a dynamic duo that you do not want to face with. The whole time Mason's been calm, like... Fonseca, Dominguez, and Conley have been reeling him in. Final lap. Cool paint? Ah, thank you. This is just a stock paint for this car. Yeah, Flynn doesn't need to push it anymore. Obviously modified. <laughs> but our Camaro's good! Whoa! Moon! Me metal metallic, pretty much. Because it's a concept car, so I don't even think it has like an official color. I remember when I did the Monaco one, I got super lucky in a 2J in second. Crashed in the last corner of the first lap and caused a traffic jam. <laughs> yeah, the historic racing car cup is the one I'm not looking forward to in terms of B-Spec. Like that one, I have to get the Toyota 7. I have to like max tune that thing and I have to just really mess with the settings on the car. Like maximum downforce at Monaco and like really short gearing so that way he can accelerate as fast as possible. Rest in peace. <laughs> they want to go to the shop again. Oh, really? So into the bus stop for the final time. Flynn takes kind of a wide line. I mean, he isn't really going in too tight. Not really hitting the apexes. Well, he hit the apex now. And pretty much he won this race. Let's check out the battle for second. Let's see who gets the second place position between Mason and Fonseca. Mason's gonna get it. Yeah, he's pulling away. Doesn't matter, we win at Daytona. Pretty much a commanding victory for Flynn.
Ooh, not quite there to level 19 just yet. Save this replay. And moving on to the second round. Thanks. Flynn says thank you. <laughs> So, second and final round will take place at Laguna Seca. Let's see what the drivers are like. Okay, every driver is still down except for Flynn. Stingray for Taurus. Oh my god, this is such a weak field. Wow, this is such a weak field. Like, the muscle cars are not going to be able to put up with the modern ones. Like, the classic cars are just going to get slaughtered. And the four Taurus of all cars, like, really? <laughs> like, alright. Well, time for the massacre to begin. I mean... I'm not really expecting to lose this race. Flynn's going to take the lead by the end of the first lap. I'm calling it right now. Have you done the European Classic or Championship yet? No, because I'm trying to save a little bit more money so that way I can go and buy a little bit more parts for the Alpine. Because there's a Genetta G4 in the typical opponents and I do not want to deal with it. Well, already up to fourth. Pretty wide line through there. To turn three. It's Flynn. I think you're overestimating him. <laughs> that is true. He's not Kobayashi. At the same time, I mean, yeah, it is Flynn. He's not as bad as Maldonado, but... Clearly not the number one driver on the team. Yeah, he's not going to get first. He's been really cautious. Well, he goes really wide, just like the Cougar, driven by Ferrara. Maybe a pass into the final corner for Flynn? I doubt it. Yeah, I'm overestimating Flynn big time. So he's going to take the lead here by turn one. Because these guys are going to hit the rev limiter like right now. By the way, my dad loves this track in GT3. I just can't get into GT3 and not this track. I've actually been to Laguna Seca before. It's such a cool place. I've never gone for a race, but cool story so i went to the sonoma indycar round which was the finale for the indycar championship back in 2016 and i got to walk the track because we were parked over by turn nine or infinian raceway for gran turismo 4 fans so we were parked at turn number nine in the s's and we got to stay for the championship celebration with team penske and simon pagino and we realized at that point there's no more shuttles servicing the track and we're like okay we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find some way to get escorted to our car and so my friend was just like how about this how about we walk on the track and the security is gonna see us walking on the track they're gonna have to kick us out in order to kick us out they're gonna escort us to our car we're like yeah good idea bro so we ended up walking the entire track the security passed by they didn't give a damn about us being on there and we pretty much walked almost the entire Sonoma Raceway. Up the hill, down the carousel, in the hairpins. Like, it was it was incredible. We didn't walk the entire S's because, I mean, we, you know, we basically went to our car. But still, we went there. And then on Monday, when we were coming back to L.A., we stopped by Salinas, California to go to Laguna Seca. And I got to walk up the corkscrew. Well, the, official, the track officials didn't know, but they let us kind of walk around. And there was no track activity going on. 
So my friends and I, we hopped the fence. We walked up the corkscrew and we found some like old spotter stand or like spotter area. No, 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 not a spotter area. I mean a flag waving area. And it was so cool. Like Laguna Seca is a really cool track to visit. And I really want to go for the IndyCar finale next year. So yeah, that was about my adventure at Sonoma slash Laguna Seca. <laughs> cool story, bro. Hey, what's up, Marvin? How's it going? All right. Even though Plep King says we're underestimating Flynn, he's doing good. Then again, the field is comprised of muscle cars, like old school muscle cars. I love Laguna Seca, me too. Me too, dude. We're going next year? Yes, we are, dude. We're definitely going for the IndyCar finale. I've already told Marvin, we're planning it already. <laughs> but it's in the very, very pre-alpha stages right now. Because obviously we got to figure all the flights and stuff. I'm just cleaning my damn room. It's a freaking mess. Ah, uh, dude, I, I was doing that yesterday while I was watching your GTA 5 live stream, and then occasionally doing ads to get you some more bits. <laughs> like honestly, the only reason why I'm I'm even giving you so many bits is just so I can see the Bill Gates dabbing over and over again because it always cracks me up. I think what makes it so funny is the Windows XP startup sound. Well, apart from that, apart from you being a good streamer, <laughs> now I'll watch you play GT5 and clean my room. Teamwork. Yep, because teamwork makes the dream work, bro. Hayden's still in second. Ferrara's still in third. Martin's still in fourth. Sahin, I'm surprised that this... <laughs> Favorite animated TV show? Um, I'll, I'll think about that right now. Love the Bill Gates stab. Me too, dude. Anyway, Sahin, I'm surprised he hasn't even caught up to Martin yet. De Leon is giving him trouble, I guess. Flynn is just cruising at this point. But my favorite animated TV show? Um, if you're asking me of all time, like, in terms of what I grew up with, I would say Edit and Eddie. I love that show so much as a kid, and I love it even more as an adult. My favorite, um, my favorite episode is I think it's called Fix Your Ed or Ed for Hire or something. It's like when they were repairmen, when when the three Eds were repairmen, and all they did all they did was like destroy Jimmy's oven and they destroyed like Johnny's house. Like those episodes have me crying every time I watch because it's so goddamn funny. Mine's South Park. South Park was good. I don't like modern South Park, though. I, I think they should have ended probably after season 8. That's around the time I stopped watching. Back with some bad news. Oh, dude. What's going on? But, yeah. Um, in terms of adult comedies, like adult... Um, Animated series? Hmm. Your sister was screaming? Oh, why? <laughs> it's kind of weird. See, I thought you were going to say some really bad news, but I guess you're just making noise. Anyways, back to the question about adult series for animation. Um, gee, that's hard. I used to like The Simpsons back in the day, when it was still good, because now it's crap in my opinion. Family Guy, like, I was a fan of it in middle school, but then, like, now, I don't know if I can watch another episode and really enjoy it. Like, now, I just feel like I don't get the same enjoyment for Family Guy as I used to. American Dad, I love American Dad. South Park, like I already mentioned. 
I love the first eight seasons. Um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I freaking love that show. It's really shitty now. Yeah, dude. Family Guy and South Park are both garbage right now. Are now. The Simpsons as well. But Aqua Teen Hunger Force, I love. Um, guys, random story. I just found an old combination lock, and I can't believe it, but I remember the combination. <laughs> really? That's so weird, but that's so cool. She wanted an egg, and you broke it? Ah, bro. Can't be breaking eggs, man. Think about that chick that could have been. That's where you have to eat it. So that way it doesn't die in vain. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Oh, there's another Adult Swim show I really like. The Boondocks? Your ears? Yeah, she's probably blowing your head off right now, huh? Just screaming all over the house because you, you broke the egg. But The Boondocks is probably one of my favorite um, animated shows of all time. Well, before Season 4. Season 4 was garbage because Aaron Magruder wasn't writing for it. But, yeah, The Boondocks is a show that I just love a lot. Um, what else? What else? Um, that's all I can really think of right now. How about you guys in chat? What are your favorite animated TV shows? I need my 455 epic horns. <laughs> Stop the screaming. King of the Hill from time to time. King of the Hill's good. I enjoy King of the Hill. I'm not the craziest fan for it, but I do enjoy it a lot. Archer's another one I enjoy, but I can't say... Oh my god, they killed Kenny. You bastards. I used to love when that was a running gag. Like, one of my favorite parts was, um, I think Timmy was trying to kill Jimmy for whatever reason. I think because he was, like, the new kid or whatever, like, the new handicapped kid. And when he gives him Kenny's sweater, and then, like, Jimmy starts to walk away, and then everything tries to kill him, and, and it doesn't. Like, the airplanes fall, and, like, I think someone tries to shoot him or something. But it was a while since I've seen that clip, but that one has me dying every time. Um, yeah, like I was saying, Archer... Archer's another one that I like, but I'm not, like, the biggest, biggest fan of. Can't say that I go crazy over it. Like, okay, at San Diego Comic-Con, I went to the Archer panel, well, the only, like, the last 20 minutes, because Ambush King and I were just like, all right, you know what, I'm, I'm here for Ambush. He's here for his own Black Lightning stuff, and, you know, I'm just like, okay, well, we'll go to whatever panel you want. He wants to go to the Archer one. We spent two hours... And we were one of the last people to get in. And it was like 6,000 people in that damn panel. And we only got to see the last 20 minutes. But just the way that people were going nuts over the, the actors. I'm just sitting there like, okay. All right. <laughs> I used to watch a lot of Tom and Jerry. And I still do. Tom and Jerry's good. I like Tom and Jerry. Except for like modern Tom and Jerry. Like the reboots are so stupid. Same with Scooby-Doo. Reboots for those shows are so dumb. Boss Burger's great show. Yep. It's good, but... Again, not the biggest fan. She stepped on a Lego? What the... What the hell? <laughs> I'm trying to think what other shows I liked back then. Well, SpongeBob, like the first three seasons were awesome. Fairly Odd Parents, the first couple seasons were good before they introduced a stupid baby. Um, Tom and Jerry was good back then, like I, like I mentioned earlier. Scooby Doo. Um, Jesus Christ, I'm trying to think of more shows that I liked animation wise, and can't really think of any now. Kind of hit like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I, I guess I, I like hit like a. Like a roadblock in my memory. For a lack of a better analogy. 
<laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty much it. See, I like how the four Taurus that started up on in the front row, he like fell all the way back. I knew this four Taurus was gonna be garbage here. But Flynn only has one more lap to go. Even though he's super calm right now, there's pretty much no way he's gonna lose the race. Because he's gonna pull a even bigger gap on Hayden at the end of the straightaway, because Hayden's gonna top out like around 110. He already gained 10 more miles, so he should be good. Although I'll make him pace up just a little bit. Not too much. Ren and Stampy, yes! I love Ren and Stampy. Rocco's Modern Life. Rugrats is cool. Wasn't crazy for Rugrats, but I liked it. Wild Thornburys was was cool too, but what, again, wasn't crazy for it. Angry Beavers was cool. Wasn't super crazy over it, but I still liked Angry Beavers. Kazo? I'm I'm not sure what that is. Oh, oh, you rejected the message? Alright, gotcha. Your grandpa? What about your grandpa? Well, Flynn is just cruising to victory. This is like a Formula One race. Pretty much the best car. Yo, is this the Muscles race? Yes, it is. And we have a pretty weak field. Your grandpa died? Dude, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, man, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that, dude. That sucks. Yeah, let me go ahead and talk to you a little bit later about a uh, GT fan. Have I heard of the Kazoo Kit? No, I haven't. And what do we win? Mustang GT 05. Alright. Cool. And yeah, it's a standard car. Not really surprised. Windveal Blue Clear Coat Metallic. Alright. I think this Mustang could come in handy a little bit later on. So, let's go ahead and check it out real quick. So here it is, our Ford Mustang. Better than a new Stang? Yeah. I'm not really a big fan of the new thing, although I guess I could be a little bit picky. I wish it was the 07 model because that one's premium, but yeah. So next time on Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec, I think we're going to do the, the German Schwarzwald League number A. Maybe. Maybe.